Hello and welcome to another episode of Book Journey Mentor Uncut. Thank you so much for um, tuning in. If you find this content of worth and of value, please do share this out and invite your friends and followers. But first of all, who am I? My name is Daniela Blechner. I'm an author, book journey mentor, founder of a company called Conscious Dreams Publishing. We work with authors from all over the world to help them to get their powerful message and stories out there in the form of professional books. On the bookshelf behind me, you can see just some of the 80 books that we've published over the last four years. We've also mentored over 190 authors, helping them to, to develop their skill set in writing, publishing, social media, branding, public speaking, but most importantly, confidence. I'm absolutely passionate about providing a platform for unseen, unheard authors so that they can have their voices shared, heard, and stories shared on a global scale. I absolutely love what I do. Book Journey Mentor Uncut is the show that offers a platform to unseen, unheard authors, new, up and coming, but also established authors. Some are published by Conscious Dreams Publishing, some are published through other means. My aim on this show really is to give you a really wide range of different authors with powerful messages and stories and for you to really have an opportunity to ask them questions and understand the publishing process from all different aspects. It's also an opportunity to hear from experts as well. So I'm interviewing editors, animators, book designers, illustrators, other publishers, so you can get a really in-depth view into the publishing process. So I'm very excited to introduce my amazing guest for today. Her name is Kamisha Jure Hodge. <laughs> she is the founder of Sovereign Publications, absolutely passionate about providing a platform for black women to share their stories through their books. So please welcome Kamisha. Hey everybody, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me on here. Lovely. Absolute pleasure to have you. And thank you, Lawville, for coming on. And thank you so much for sharing. Please do. This is a very interactive show. So whether you're watching on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, my Facebook group, please do leave a message. All your comments will, will be um, answered as well so and if you are coming in please do say hello tap the screen show us some love and let us know where you are watching from so Kamisha tell us a little bit about you and how you became interested in well obviously you know literature before you even thought about setting up your your publishing services no no problem um I've been reading since the age of three um when I was just a little little youngster my grandmother bought me this um, it was a little program. I don't know if they still have it, but it was called Hooked on Phonics, and it taught you how to read. I My birthday is in November, so I'm, I wasn't able to start school with the, the other kids because my birthday was so late. <laughs> right, yeah, I get it. Um, beforehand, they had given me Hooked on Phonics, and I just breezed through it. I remember the only word that I had difficulty with was thimble. I just could not get thimble and then I finally got it maybe two or three days later. And um, after that, it was just, I, I loved literacy and I loved reading. Um, I had joined a poetry club in the sixth grade where we competed against other middle schoolers at what used to be Borders Bookstore. They gave us gift cards to buy books. Remember Borders? Yeah, it was such a great bookstore. I loved it so much. Um, <laughs> um, after that, I had, uh, decided to go through my high school track as a communications focus, um, joined my school newspaper, joined my school magazine, uh, interviewed people all over the world. It was a, it was a very um, fantastic experience. It was something that I would undoubtedly do again if I had the opportunity. And in that time frame, I had met my mentor, Yolanda Body. And she was the very first person who I had met who had actually written a book and actually published a book. And I had went with her on her book tours, went with her to help sell her book when, during her vending events. And it was, it was a great experience. She taught me different marketing strategies and I'm in high school. So I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And wow. <laughs> yeah, and so that, um, that really brought me from just loving literature to actually getting some insight into the publishing aspect. And so 
with that knowledge and with my mentor's help, I literally published a book a few years later, my very first poetry book. I sold about three or 400 units during my launch. It was, it wow. was, and how old were you? Sorry. I think I was, I was between, I think I was 20 or 21. One of those. Okay. So still the young, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, baby. Um, <laughs> And so now about 10, 11 years later, I'm still publishing books. This time I'm not just publishing my own, but I've published so many different authors, um, mostly stateside from East Coast, West Coast, um, mainly from DC and New York. Those are the, the majority of where my clients are. But um, I created Sovereign Noir uh, out of a lack of diversity, uh, specifically lack of black people in the general publishing mm -hmm. sphere. In 2018, Publishers Weekly um, released a report that said only 2% of people, 2%. <laughs> I saw that on your site. I, mean, I was shocked the fact that in, in the UK, I mean, obviously we're from the US, I'm from the UK. In the UK, mm -hmm. in 2018, only 1% of main characters in children's fiction were from, and this isn't just black, black, Asian, minority, ethnic is what all the term used, um, characters. Wow. And in the top 100, only one of them featured um, uh, a diverse character, a B A. I don't want to say B-A-M-E because I, I can't stand that term, but that's a term that's Black, Asian, minority, ethnic character. And and the, the character was a robber in the top 100 best-selling children's fiction books. It's now risen to 5% of main characters in children's fiction within traditional publishing are of you know, any other ethnicity apart from Caucasian. So to hear the American stats, what was it? Only 2% of all was it? And as of last year, 2019, their study was, it was, it had increased to 4%. So wow. I guess. Um, <laughs> and what was, what was really interesting was about last year's, about 30 to 50% were in marketing. So they weren't even in, a wow. variety of areas in the industry they were specifically behind the screen yeah yeah and seeing those numbers in 2018 really frustrated me it really frustrated me seeing those again in 2019 and so i thought why not create a platform where black women writers are celebrated honored and supported without having to deal with the rigmarole of having to um think about, well, am I being hired for diversity? Am I being hired for all of these uh, intrinsic biases? No, so, this is a, yeah. it's a black okay. business supporting black women writers, period. And so that is how we got to where we are now. We have published quite a few people. We've had so many courses on self-publishing, on marketing, on branding. Um, we just released the Authors Business Journal, which is basically a business plan for authors um, that covers marketing, quarterly goals, um, business goals. It's a daily planner. It's a lot of things that I don't think that I don't think that a lot of authors think about. Even with our mm -hmm. public form, we ask, "What are you? Um, what are your marketing plans for the next twelve to eighteen yeah. months? Uh, how, what is your word count? What is your target audience?" And a lot of the time when people come to us, before, when we ask these questions, they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I just so, want to publish a book. Yes. But yeah. it's like having a baby, isn't it? You've got to plan for that baby's life, especially in that first year, yeah. you know. And and one of the main um, things that we're trying to change is when people ask, well, how quickly can I get this book out? The question isn't how quickly you can get the book out. The question mm -hmm. is how effectively can you market Thank you. Before your book is even released, one of okay. our clients, he, he, uh, we have a subsidiary which is henceforth for specifically for black men. He pre-sold over fifty copies of his book his first day, and I was just shook. <laughs> I was shook. Uh, we had another client who she was fantastic. She had created a whole marketing plan before her book even was released, so we were proud of her as well. And so Sovereign Noir, we just essentially want to help build better authors, help authors yeah. build their brands. That way that we can, you know, get more black books out in the market. Not just black books, but quality black books. 
Amazing. Okay, Donna says she'll awesome. She'll contact you soon. Faye says hello. Hey, Marva. So break down um, exactly who you are. So you're Sovereign Noir Publications. Are you a publishing house or do you offer publishing service? Hey, Linda, do you offer publishing services and coaching services to, for authors to DIY? So sort of just break down the, the services, what you offer. Um, thank you. That is a <laughs> that is a good segue. Um, we are sort of a hybrid. So I know that a lot of people can't afford the quality of services that we provide. And that's totally okay. Um, yeah. so on the alternative route, we also provide services for them to help themselves. So if you want to self-publish and don't know how to, we have a course on that. We have uh, eBooks on that. You wanna know how to write a book? We have a novels writing notebook that teaches you different elements of the writing process, how to create a safe space for yourself, how to create a writing regimen for yourself. We have literally resources from changing your writing mindset all the way to once you're done launching your book how to market we have all of these different resources for those people who want to do it on their own the DIY, the diyers yeah and we also have services for those who are like i don't want to do any of these things here's my money <laughs> so we provide a holistic look when it comes to publishing not only do we give you ebooks and um, print galleys. Not only do we have a professional graphic designer, we have editors, we have marketing specialists who actually market for a living. Um, but we also do behind the scenes things like setting up automated emails for you. We create the social media graphics for you. We help you reach your target audience by finding podcasts and YouTube channels that are specific to your niche. So. We do both. We we have stuff with the DIYers, but we're also a we're not. A, I don't want to say traditional publisher. We're more of a vanity publisher than it. Yeah, or a partnership publishing company like yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So we do both. So I guess this is a question for me. So if I've worked with some published some authors, for example, and they wanted help with sort of automated systems or marketing aspect, can I pass them on to your way? Of course you can. Because <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very much about the nuts and bolts and the publishing and the coaching to an extent, but we're not a marketing company. So that that's fantastic. Great. Somebody's asking for the website. So if you hold on till the end, we'll put all the details in um, at the end. Awesome. All right, Dora. <laughs> cool. Thank you for coming in. If you've got any questions as well, please do drop, drop your questions in for Kamisha too. So tell us how how when did you set this up and how long have you how long have you been going? Well, um, I have been freelancing since about 2011. I started out freelancing as an editor. So once I published my book, I was like, okay, now I just want to edit. <laughs> so I got to editing and one of my clients was like, oh, this is so great. Can you just publish it for me? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so from there, it sort of, you know, uh, segued into me doing publishing and editing freelance. I already had some uh, contractors that I had used on a regular basis to do the graphic design and everything. Um, yeah. But in 2000, like I said, in 2019, when I saw that early 2019, when I saw the 2018 publisher uh, weekly report, that's yeah. when I decided I really have to do something about this because this is yeah. just asinine. It's ridiculous. It's not. On. It's really not. <laughs> In April of 2019, I was talking to a few, a few friends of mine and I thought, well, you know, I publish anyway. So what do you guys think about having a publishing company? And they were like, well, why are you just now thinking of this? We, we told you this already. And I was like, yeah, you did. And so, <laughs> and so I got the business license registered um, in Virginia. I went ahead and got the licenses, the registration, the EIN, all of the legal things situated. And we didn't start publishing immediately. What we did was we wanted to make sure that we did our research first. We looked up a competition. We looked up our target audience. Like the same thing we tell our clients to do. We literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I remember <laughs> having to do that. Oh. <laughs> we did our um, social networks. We had our. I think we started off with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Then we ended up having a Pinterest. Then we ended up having LinkedIn. It was just like, oh, wow. we set up our website domains. We didn't have anything on the website yet. We just purchased it because we wanted to make sure that nobody yeah. could take it. And then we started following different Black women writers on Instagram, following different Black women writers on Twitter, engaging with them. And then before you know it, 
now we have 1600 followers. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We didn't actually start selling services and uh, products until January of this year. And oh, we wow. almost made it to the $10,000 mark, which is great. Um, Fantastic. Well done. Yay! I haven't realized you only started officially in January because I think we yeah. met. I feel like we met a long, longer time yeah. than that. We, it was before January. It was before. It was before. Um, because we had we had set up the Black Women Writers Virtual Summit before, yeah. January. and so um, we were planning ahead, but we wanted to make sure that we were doing it properly. So we didn't want to. That's brilliant. What we had, we didn't want to bring too many clients on before we yeah. established ourselves. We wanted to make sure that when we do come out, we want to make a big bang. And so yeah, we, it, we did that. Um, we had all of you guys, uh, especially you. Uh, we had some great people who presented. You guys gave such a, a, a great deal of information. Everyone loved it. Thank you. Positive reviews for all of you ladies who presented. And so um, as of now, we're at 11 clients. And so that Amazing. is fantastic. It's been difficult, um, as you know, with coronavirus. It's been difficult with Ingram Spark. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. We'll explain that in a second, those it, who are watching. It was, it, was, it was a lot, but we are here and we are, we're doing pretty good. I just read yeah. that site. Um, we often ask our clients, what do you, what will make your lives easier as authors? And you'll see it all throughout our Instagram page. What do you need? What are your challenges? And we use that to create content because that's what, smart business to do you don't have to you're gonna, you're gonna you solve don't... problems that are legitimately there not create them that you think are the ones that you think are going to be the problems exactly. yeah you don't have to recreate the wheel just ask what what do you need and they will tell you <laughs> so those who are watching in i think it was was it january or december you did the writer's summit the black writer's the summit. summit was actually in april Oh, we were, we, <laughs> were lost were, time. we were marketing like way before April. So we yeah. started opening up the um, applications in either November or December. Right. So Kamisha had um, a three day, two to three day summit and she had marketers on, black women, marketers, writers, publishers, people in all different aspects of, you know, black literature and publishing <laughs> sharing their information and it was amazing and I, I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to speak and also engage and watch other people's and I was literally glued to the screen throughout it was friends so well organized as well okay. so let us know when you're doing another one and if you want if there's any replays or anything that you're connect that connects to it do let people know in the chat box down below as well um Eric says I'm enjoying listening to you and still educative lovely so tell us who do you specifically work with? Who's your ideal customer? We work with, uh, like you, we work with new, um, upcoming and established writers, but we specifically target new authors, um, specifically because we know that it's very difficult for new writers to get it right the first time. Yeah. And I'm in a lot of different Facebook groups. I'm not very active in them. I'm more like a creep. I just come in and just <laughs> like <laughs> <in> it, <laughs> <laughs> But um a lot of new writers have this they all have the same questions. How do I upload to KDP? Why should I use KDP? What are the op other options? What yeah. is even Ingram Sparks? I don't even know what to do with my book. I'm finished. Do I need to edit? Do I hire an editor? So yeah. instead of having um them go through the same struggles that I went through when I was first uh, published. We've made it a business to make sure that new authors have those resources handy. You don't have to make all of those mistakes and then learn from those mistakes. I made the mistakes so that you don't have to. I made the mistake. <laughs> so tell us, what, what would you say? Like, I'd be interested to hear from your point of view. Uh, what are, in your mind, the top three mistakes that first time authors make? not planning mm -hmm. and whether that is not planning your book um not planning how you want to launch your book not planning past the writing phase not planning how you want to market your book it's literally just plan just you yeah. have to think past i want to write a book and i want to publish it you yeah. have to think about well 
what kind, what, what genre do I want to write? Do I want to be stuck to this genre? Am I going to use my real name? Am I going to use a pen name? How long am I going to give myself to write this book? Should I start building my brand while I'm writing this book? Exactly. The market while I'm writing this book so that when I set up pre-orders, I have 100, 200, 300 pre-orders before the book is even released. Where do I want to get my um, sales from? Do I just want to do it on Amazon? Do I want to do it on Ingram and Amazon? Do I just want to do it through Ingram? Do I just want to sell them on my website? So there's a lot of different aspects of planning that authors don't uh, know exist, I think. Yeah. Um, the second thing that I think authors get wrong is the editing part. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's my number one, hundred percent. We're on. The, we're like, you're like the newest version of me. Like, oh, these are my top, definitely my top two so far. Go on, not planning exactly. <laughs> editing, talk to me. Oh my gosh. So editing, I used to like. That's why I went. That's why I have an editor. I am no longer. I have my editor. Me too. I don't have the patience anymore for editing, um, specifically because people confuse ghostwriting with editing mm. and they write the book and they think that that's the final draft and uh, not the case at all <laughs> you should edit it at least self-edit it at least twice yeah i'm not even saying three times even though i want to say three times just self-edit at least twice developmental edit is when you look at the entire book you look at the plot you look at the character development you look at all sorts of things that operate on a macro level, on the larger level. Then once you're done fixing those things, you go on a micro level. I'm not saying you have to proofread. I'm saying copy edit, yeah. look line by line, look paragraph by paragraph, make sure that you have a quotation mark at the end of the quote and not just at the beginning. Make sure that you have periods at the end of your sentences. Make sure that your sentences are complete sentences if that is what you're trying to do. I don't wanna read a book that has 50,000 red squiggly lines in Microsoft Word, because yeah. I know that you can see those same red squiggly lines. Thank you, <laughs> preach. <laughs> and then the proofing's the last layer, whereas some people submit and they say, oh, it just needs a proof. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's so much more than that. <laughs> exactly. And people don't realize, people don't realize it and they ask their editors, well, so how long, what am I looking at? Two weeks, three weeks, baby. <laughs> No, <laughs> I will have to. You and my editor are gonna have to work on this together because I just yeah. not. So planning and editing. The third thing that I think authors really have to make sure that they are at least somewhat aware of is how they want to present their book, not just aesthetically. Because unfortunately, while the the phrase of "Don't judge a book by its cover." Everyone judges a book by its cover. So, <laughs> no. so making sure that when you market your book, your the way that you market your book is not just about um, saying, hey, go buy my book. Marketing your book is the graphic design, the graphic design of the cover, the, the interior design of the book, um, the social media graphics that you use to promote the book. It's mm. how... If you're using Canva, you're not using the exact template that's on Canva. You're changing it. To yeah. make or, you, or using images, like stock cover images with the watermark on the back when you're, <laughs> when you're marketing. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, treat your, it, we created this, your book is your business. Um, 100%. We created this this series called Your Book is Your Business. And I think that because I've been doing it so long, this stuff is very basic to me. And so that's why I have to dial it back sometimes. And I think, okay, what am I doing in my business right now? And how can I help other, how can I help writers and authors implement this into their business? I talk a lot about email marketing campaigns. I talk a lot about email automation, sales funnels. A lot of people don't, Sales funnels is also very important, you guys. If you don't have a yeah. sales funnel, then you should make one. <laughs> don't just throw one together, but again, plan it. Um, yeah. 
I have a post on that on our on our page, I think. Just for those who are watching and they're at absolute ground zero and they're thinking, what is a sales funnel by? They don't really want to ask. What, how would you describe what a sales funnel is? For a authors? sales funnel is how you get your client from aware of your brand to purchasing from your brand. So a sales funnel can, our sales funnel only has four steps. Very four, It's very simple. We don't like complicated. We don't like complex. Very simple, four steps. Making sure that people are aware of your brand. You can do that through advertisements on Facebook, advertisements on Instagram, cold, um, cold messaging people who are interested in your, you know, genre. Then interest is the second step. How do you get those people interested in your product? Are you giving um, character analyses? Are you, you know, hosting IG lives about the difference between your book or what's inspired you to write your book or who your favorite author is. Um, and once you do awareness and interest, next, you're going to make sure that you, you know, bring them in with something. Give them something to, give them something to think about. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're providing them a call to action. Tell them what, tell them, hey, I'm selling this thing and you would like it. Here's why. Give them a reason to want to buy it. Yeah. And finally, once they buy it, don't just, you know, leave, them leave it there. Don't just leave it there. That is your opportunity to follow up with them. Hey, thank you. Thank you for purchasing. Mm -hmm. Here's a 10% discount to your next service. Can you take this survey to let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it? It's, it's taking care of your client or your purchaser or your ideal customer from point A to point B. Make yep. sure going from aware to interested to purchasing to you taking care of them once they yep. want something from you you're you have to take care of them and that's yep. what a lot of people get wrong so i love I love that you said that because I think it's so important, especially in you know the jobs that you and I do, you know, publishing companies, working with authors. A lot of these authors don't just want to write one book and that's it. So it's about, you know, if you take care of your existing customers, it's not about just getting new ones every two seconds. It's about nurturing those existing ones so that they stay in your community. It's about community building, isn't it? So that's a really important point. Thank you. Yeah, if you have just tuned in, you are watching Book the Journey Mentor Uncut. My name is Daniela Blechner, author, Book the Journey Mentor, founder of Conscious Strings Publishing. I am interviewing the awesome and amazing Kamisha, who is the founder of Sovereign Noir Publications, works with black women from all over the world with powerful messages and stories, I, I assume. Uh, are, there, are you are you working with authors who work in a specific genre or what kind of books? What's your ideal book we, for you? We do have specific genres, um, although if they do not fit into our genre, that's totally fine because we recommend them to other publishers who do. Yeah. We specifically do memoir, self-care or self-help, wellness, poetry, erotica, urban lit. Oh, well, you have a lot of erotica yeah. clients coming to me. I'm, like, I'm sorry, we don't work on that, but now I know where to take them. Brilliant. Okay. Don't sci-fi. I don't enjoy reading sci-fi. And so that's why I, I would like to make sure that every book that we publish, I read through and I enjoy. If I don't enjoy it, it goes back to the editor and it goes back to the author. Um, but if I can't get through, I don't want to sell books that I haven't read and that I don't enjoy. So I, I can't get through history books. I can't get through romance half of the time. So, <laughs> so we've basically just chosen the genres that we like. <laughs> yes, the ones that I like and the ones that I'm familiar enough with, um, mm. as far as like the plot, the, the plot development, uh, and the target audience. I can tell yeah. you how to get to these people that read these books. Historic romance. <laughs> I, no, I can't. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have specific um, genres and, uh, you know, as, as always, if we can't provide you a specific service, then we definitely are not the type to say, well, we'll take it knowing that that's not something that we do 100%, we have yeah. to make sure that we're not only staying true to what our mission is, but we want to make sure that you as an author are getting the best person for the job. And mm -hmm. when it comes to historic sci-fi academic writing that's not our zhish we will send you to someone who can do that 
Got it. I like that we share a very similar brand value. So our brand, number one brand value is always integrity. Excellent. It's the same. And one of the reasons I had to set this up, because I, I don't know if you found this when you published your first book, was I tried to go the traditional route first, you know, followed everything by a route. It was so difficult. As you say, the 2%, I couldn't even get into that, that sphere that allowed you to get into that mm-hmm. near the 2%. But then you've got the other side of it, which is vanity publishers, you know, and they're charging thousands for books that they don't even read exactly. are not edited half the time. And then they're taking huge royalties on something they couldn't get that, about, that, you know. That's the route that I went. I used the, uh, I don't want to name drop, but I mean. I, I, I can get, we can talk <laughs> off air. Go on then, I don't mind. I used Zillabris and okay. Zillabris is one of the biggest um, vanity publishers in the U.S. Yeah. And I was just so excited. And I like I tell you, like all of the things that the new authors are dealing with, I dealt with that too. I had my, my manuscript ready. I was like, all right, ready to publish. My book is going to yeah. come out next week. And I had not edited anything. I had not gone over anything. All I saw was that the editing was included. And I was like, okay, cool. And so sent them the hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, it wasn't hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it was it was a few hundred. It was enough for the, the, the was, age that you're at. And it was an investment, isn't it? When you add everything up, it was at least a few thousand because you have to remember, you're paying for them to publish it. They mm-hmm. have the ISB. They have the ISB. So they own the publishing rights. Right. Yeah. Giving them royalties. And you have to pay for promotional material. <laughs> you have to pay for the book buyback program. It's so many different expenses that add up. <clears throat> so that experience was very difficult because even though I sold a lot of books, I sold the most books selling them, purchasing my copies wholesale. Right. right. Yeah. And um, that's one of the things that I take pride in as a publisher because I'm like, listen, I am setting it up so that if you want this hybrid publishing, you get 70% and I take 30. That's yeah. it. Like there's no, all of the marketing things that I'm doing for you, it's included in the price. And if you yeah. choose an option where it's a self-publishing thing, you get 100% of the royalties. I don't, all of the money that comes in, it's yours. <laughs> I give yeah. you the reports and everything. I want to make sure that they're not, I want to make sure that they're taken care of because yeah. I. <laughs> yeah, 100% the same, yeah. It's a very vanity. Some vanity publishers are very predatory. And so that's something that that if you have not uh, looked into or researched what kind of publishing company you're looking for, if you're going to use a vanity publisher, think about royalties. Think about whether you even get wholesale discounts, because I know some companies don't even give you wholesale discounts. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's it's very it's it's creepy out there. So just just be vigilant. Be vigilant. Be vigilant is the one. <laughs> um, so we were talking about the different routes. Um, I'm trying to remember kind of what what got me onto that. Um, I had a question I wanted to ask about your your books, but it's it, it's gone. I got so caught away with what you're saying. Um, so the self-publishing route and then charging thousands of pounds and, and getting ripped off, that was it. Yeah. Um, what would you say then would be your top tips? I know you talked about the top, the, the biggest mistakes. Mm-hmm. What would you say that your top tips for authors who were just going the complete self-publishing route with no assistance? I would say definitely make sure that you are doing your research first. A lot of us just... And I say us because, like I said, I've been through this process. I just looked up, I Googled (laughs) self-publish, saw Zillabris and said, okay. You know, like, look at different types of uh, vanity publishers. Look at Book Baby. Look at uh, Ingram Spark. Look at Amazon KDP. Compare and contrast them. There are so many articles that people have written that compare Mm. and contrast different types of publishing uh, distributors. So read them, (laughs) read them. You have to do your research. Another thing that I would say is if you are tight on a budget, you still need an editor. You still Mm -hmm. need a graphic designer. You're still going to need someone to help you with marketing. If you can't afford my services, if you can't afford someone else's services, Fiverr is great. However, I'm going to put a big asterisk right here. 
<laughs> you gotta find the good ones. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Okay. If you're looking through their portfolio, and I've I've gotten I've gotten got so many times on Fiverr as well. Um, however, you want to make sure that you're not just looking at their portfolio. Have a conversation with them as well. I need someone who can one show me work outside of what's on Fiverr because I've seen a couple of Fiverr um, pages that had the exact same designs. Oh, I'm like, right. oh wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no. Um, um, if you're going to work on Fiverr, make sure that people are, if you're going to work for, if you're looking on Fiverr for editors, they should be able to give you a sample edit, whether it's a sample yeah. edit of your work or a sample edit of someone else's work. You want to make sure that the editor that you use works you because people have different editing styles. Mm. I completely differently from how my um, my editor edits. So you have to look at these things. I'm the type of person that I will go through and, mm, nope, don't like that. We're going to change this. I don't, <laughs> I just do. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I don't have time for the back and forth. I want to make sure that this book is done correctly and properly. I got you. I got you. Whereas my editor, she's more of a, perhaps you can try <laughs> this sentence this way. Have you thought about this or this? Girl, if you don't pick one of the sentences, like, I, I don't. <laughs> That's why you don't edit anymore, right? <laughs> I get it. But my style works for some people and it doesn't work for others, whereas her style works for some people and it doesn't work for others. So you want to make sure you're going to know your client. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And um, gosh, what else? I want to also say be mindful of the genre that you're writing because you writing your book is great and fantastic, but you also want to make sure that it's competitive in your genre. Mm -hmm. you be in a romance genre and your book is only 30,000 words when the genre's average is 55,000. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're competing. I don't want to pay $9.99 for an ebook that is a third of the size that everyone else's is. You know, yeah. so you have to think about what your audience expects, how you're challenging those expectations in a positive way, and what, what ways you could potentially be challenging those expectations in a negative way as well. So you just, again, it goes back to planning. It goes back to making sure that you're aware of the niche, the genre that you're that you're writing in and what your author goals are. You have to have author goals. You can't just say, I want to publish this book and that's it. Done, yeah. Because it, that's a lot of money that you're- It's such a waste. You're right. You're, you're spending, for example, our, we just increased our prices. Our lowest tier, which is an ebook is 1,700. And- if someone came to me and said, I want to publish my book, and I asked them, why? What are your goals? And they say, mm -hmm. I just want to publish a book. You're telling me you're paying $1,700 just to publish a book. I know. That's what you're telling me. How do you plan to recoup that $1,700? Yeah. But we don't have money. It's a pandemic. We don't have money to just. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I should be more concerned about your finances than you. Like, this is not the time to be wasteful. And so a lot of my clients don't have those conversations with themselves before meeting me, which is, I get, but because you guys are on here listening, that is something that needs to be considered before you mm -hmm. even think about publishing. Why are you publishing this book? 100% number one every time. What is your why? If you don't know your why, we're, honestly, I'm like, if you don't know why you're not working, writing your book, I can't work with you because I'm not about taking your money and then just going. You know, it's about what is your plan? It's got to be successful. It's got to be effective. Exactly. Plan for the book. So, and now I remember my other question. You've got some others coming up. I will go to your questions in a second. Um, I was speaking before about brand value. So I was saying about integrity being <laughs> on value. What would you say are your top three brand values? Um... Definitely integrity. I would definitely say integrity. I'm a very, I'm the type of person that, you know, if it doesn't feel right with my spirit, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and I don't consider myself particularly religious or spiritual, but if it doesn't settle, I want to make sure that I'm able to sleep at night. And if I feel like I even, a, a, even a little iota of myself feels like I feel like I'm low key taking advantage of this person. Yeah. If 
I take this client. I don't want that. So I'm not yeah. going to do that because <laughs> I need to sleep well at night. Right. Um, and I also am, am very um, emphatic about making sure that my people are taken care of. I take care of my clients, but I also have to take care of my staff. Like I have mm. a graphic designer by the name of Anthony Garasio. He's fantastic. Love that boy. He's one of my one of my day ones. And got- <laughs> <big> <laughs> um, and whenever he needs anything, I make sure that I mean I don't stop what I'm doing at the moment, but I get it done. If he's like, hey, I need this design, this, 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 here you go. When is this book? I know. Blah, 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 blah. Here you go. My marketing specialist, we need to meet about when are you free? You know, like I make sure that whatever they need, I provide them. Um, and I try to make it so that when I do ask for them to work on a project, that the timeline is realistic, not just for the author, yeah. but for them as well. Um, so integrity. The second thing is transparency. I am an open book and every. <laughs> It's it's almost bad because my partner's like, why do you tell everybody everything about you? And it's like, I'm not. I'm just letting people know that they're not the only ones, you know? So even when, when I'm on IG Live with my people, you know, I'll be sitting in the park. Hey, guys, make sure you're wearing your mask. Make sure you have your hand sanitizer. I'm out here enjoying life. What are y'all up to? I just had this awful day. As you saw, the uh, one of my posts was like, I'm having a struggle, yeah. like a, a full transparency. I am having a rough time right now. Can I just say right now, if my authors are watching, my lockdown authors, Kamisha has had the same issues we have with Ingram Spark, so we are not alone. And yeah. as a publisher, it was so good to see, not obviously to see you struggling, of course, but <laughs> to know that, you know, this is something that's happening across the board yeah. because over the lockdown period with Ingram Spark, which is a distribution channel we use, you know, there was issues with the new interface, issues uh-huh. with waiting long periods for ordering, waiting again for long periods for the, the files to be validated. And it was just adding on so much time to a process <laughs> where we just wanted the book. I just want the proof copy before the book comes out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it's encouraging. I think that transparency allows people to see that, you know, everyone's human yeah. and these things do happen and, and no, nothing is 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 perfect and, and these challenges are okay so exactly. yeah Thank what's you. your third one i think it's really important that people see that that vulnerability and that honesty because it's not going to be perfect all the time i've been doing this for 10 years and yet this is the first time i've ever had an issue getting copies of my book i waited yeah. a month and still oh did wow <laughs> get the copies of my book until literally today i sent them to my client she just got them today her book released on juneteenth it is july what 22nd (laughs) (laughs) stop that dancing there after canceling and then having to order it from the the london office the uk office yeah like this is ridiculous it took months well weeks to even get an update with the u.s office but i ordered through the the UK office and it was I think I ordered it last week. I ordered it last week and they got maybe I should order from the US office and you order from the UK office and it might work out. Who knows? (laughs) Well they did have an update that said that their um their wait time in the US is decreasing. I was like, "Eh, I think I'm gonna just stick with (laughs) let's stick with the UK one. (laughs) But that level of transparency Transparency. Even one of my mentors, Audrea Richmond, she pre-sold 1,800 copies of her book. Wow. I was going to ask you what, what should be your most successful client. Would, would that be, do you think? That's amazing. I think one of, I think, I want to say, you know, that's a really difficult question because clients, they're successful in different levels of success. So yeah. I would say, you know, Tatrice has been exceptionally successful when it comes to marketing. She's been on at least 10 podcasts since her book has been released. She has a book signing on Friday that is sponsored by a local coffee shop. Wow. And so um, she's had a a great number of pre-orders. She's she's had a steady number of orders um, as well. So in that regard, she's very successful. Another client of mine, 
she's been successful in a different way. She's gotten several grants. She's gotten to meet different um, screenwriters and filmmakers wow. in Hollywood and LA because of her writing abilities. So mm -hmm. that that's successful too. Like you don't yeah. day you get to meet with people from Veep or people from Hollywood to have them co-sign your script and co-sign your your um, screenwriting. So that that's brilliant. I like guess let's like, get back again to your to your why. What is the purpose of you writing the book? What's, mm -hmm. what's your outcome? Exactly. Some people they want to sell, you know, however many units of their book. Other people they want to get into schools and really be effective and exactly. to really translate a message with a, their particular target audience. Others want to, you know, have lots of press coverage or get into <laughs> bookstores. So success is different, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. In different for different people. It, so. it, it, it's like you said. It why your why heavily depends on. Your success heavily depends on your why. Kayana, she had written the the book that we, the novellas, the novellas that we released, they were initially written for screen. There were supposed to be pilot episodes um, for a TV show that she wanted to do. And so she converted it to novellas so that she can get traction for it. And then when she got traction for it, she applied for grants and scholarships and different filmmaking and screenwriting opportunities. And because of that experience that he had doing those, he was able to get those. So even if you say, you, you know, I know I said earlier, if you're just saying, I just want to publish it, that's not a why. If you have a, I want to publish it so that I can get experience, that's a why. That makes yeah. sense. As opposed to, I don't know, I just have a story and I want to tell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. hundred percent, hundred percent. <laughs> All right, Zora, we're going to get to your questions now. You've been waiting for a while. So awesome. Zora says, do you, do, uh, do you do diversity books? So what she means by that is not just black books. Diversity books. Are we talking about books about diversity or do we do we mean do I use authors who are not black? That's the question, isn't it, I guess. Um, Zora, if you can clarify that for us, that would be great. Please do. We'll come back to that question, but I mean, it is just black uh, female authors that you work with, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Sovereign is specifically for black women writers. However, yep. I do have resources for you if you're not a black woman writer. <laughs> All right, thank you. Or well, come to us. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Marva says, I think you can leave your pride at the door and be open to professional feedback. You can't get away from doing your homework 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. If anyone has any questions, please throw them up. We have another 10 minutes with the lovely Kamisha. So any questions that you have for our Sovereign Noir publisher, go ahead, chuck them in. Um, I've got plenty more. <laughs> so what would you say? Tell, tell us about, you haven't told us about your actual first book. How many books have you published? And can you just tell well, us a little for bit? For me personally, I've published three books, but I've been published in a lot of, I've been published in more publications than I've actually published for myself. So I am a poet by nature. Um, that's why I started off with the sixth grade. That that was when I discovered my passion for writing. Um, the first book was called Atlas of Consciousness, which was published in 2010. Second book was Double Consciousness, which was based on W.E.B. Du Bois's uh, theory of the, the veil and double consciousness. Yeah. Yep. I did a conversation um, with someone about that the other day, actually, on LinkedIn. Really interesting. I love it. Um, <laughs> my third book was um, Unconscious, which it was one of those books. I was just like, I'm, I'm just writing this because I feel frustrated in this moment. It was back in 2000, I believe, maybe 13, um, where I was raising a very... Oh, gosh, I was raised in the hood. So I, I was in terrible environments most of my life. So violence was often uh, around, particularly gun violence. Um, I had been robbed. I had been uh, jumped by some guys. And that was like a really tough period for me. And so I, I expressed it in the best way that I knew how, which was through poetry. And so I ended up writing a collection of poetry. I didn't put it on Amazon. I didn't publish it, but I did have it on my personal website for free. I think I was like, you can donate if you want, but you can also download it for free. And those were the three that I published for myself. 
But I was also published in Georgetown um, Journal of Law and Modern uh, Critical Race Perspectives when I was, I think I was 18. I was published on uh, WAMU, which is American University's radio station. I was um, featured on NPR. I was featured on MTV. So I, I had a lot of space <laughs> where my, my work was heard. And that was simply because I unconsciously marketed myself. Um, I wasn't looking to publish and get millions and millions of dollars. I was just publishing because I had something to say and I wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so it all happened organically. It absolutely it happened organically. I had been writing anyway, so it just felt natural to do. Well, if you can um, put the links in the chat later and then we can look up your books. For sure. All right, so Zora's come back and she said um, she's black and she wants to know if you publish books about diversity. Oh. So we'll be looking at sort of non-fiction. Children's books or, or what? I actually, my first child, well, it's not my book, but all of my clients' books are like my babies as well. So when I say my baby or my book, it's not really my book. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I get it. <laughs> I have a, um, a client who is writing this book about um, a father and a daughter who are exploring D.C. because she wants to buy a hat just like him. And it teaches colors. It explores D.C., at least the, the native D.C., because D.C. has gone through immense gentrification. And it's so much so that it is the third most expensive city in the United wow. States. It's ridiculous. It used so to uh, that's a whole different conversation. It's frustrating, but we've got the same over here. Trust me. Like some of the areas, Brixton, for example, I live. I don't know if you heard of Brixton, a few ten, fifteen minutes away from me. Mm -hmm. Every time I go there, there's something new. Obviously, not recently, it's something new, and it's it, it's just completely changing. And you're always looking for your space of like you're living in between worlds of what's yeah. going on. It's so you know, weird. It's, it's everywhere so weird because it's almost as if like literally maybe 90% of my child, the areas that I've explored in my childhood and my youth, in my young adulthood, they're gone. Mm. Oh, it's all gone. It's <laughs> uh, crazy. Specifically, there's this one space, there was this park. It was this really beautiful, big, wide, vast park that my family used to go to to have you know, barbecues, we would fly kites and things like that. It's been replaced by a stadium. A, a youth baseball stadium. So, wow, it's crazy, isn't it? For that moment in time, you, you had that passage of everything you knew, but then it's completely ch changed into something else. Yeah, uh, it's another book. <laughs> it is. It, it so, Dora, I think um, in regards to the di your diversity question, I think yeah, do connect with Kamisha, and then obviously give a bit more information about your book. And, and your genre and then work from there yes. thank oh she's one of mine seems to be author really helpful information more food for thought yeah marva kamisha who are your lit that's a good question who are your literary inspirations oh absolutely tony morrison she's like <laughs> i love her so much <laughs> what's your favorite book um oh gosh i would probably say um I think in my childhood, Beloved was my favorite. Um, yeah. It was just so, it was it was interesting because she, that was the first introduction to Toni Morrison that I had. It was in Same. the summer before ninth grade. I was in AP Lit. I don't know why I was, I was such a dork. I was taking AP Lit classes during the summers. I was getting paid to take AP Lit classes. Aww. And so, <laughs> and so we had watched Beloved, the, the film version that Oprah had had with um, Danny Glover and um, Tandy Newton. And I was like, this movie is dope. And then my teacher was like, and now you're gonna read the book. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and so I read the book and it was just so beautiful. Like this story of, of this woman who sacrificed literally everything that was most valuable to her and living life on her own terms during this period where black people were enslaved. And so that really stood out to me and it still stands out to me now. I love it so much. Um, and I think the second book that I loved the most was uh, 
the I, I believe it's the white literary imagination. And it's basically about how blackness in a space of white literature, uh, she analyzed that, how we're placed sort of a in a contrast in a in in a contrast to uh, white supremacy. Is it's, that where she talks about being viewed through the white lens yes. or the white face? Yeah. It's it's a very quick read. Well, it's not a quick read. It's a very short book. It's about a hundred or so so pages, but it's very it's very dense. So you you have to sit down yeah, and no, I, read through it. Um, but those are she's oh she's so fantastic. I just watched her documentary. Uh, I believe it's Pieces of Me or the pieces that I am or something of that effect. It's on Hulu, so check that out. I've watched it three times already, so. <laughs> Final question, oh my gosh, we're coming up to the end, nearly on for an hour. So um, what would be your departing words to authors or potential authors who are sitting on their manuscripts and just thinking, oh, this might not be good enough. This is journey's too hard. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not. They're, they're full of self doubt. Basically, what would you say? Do it scared. That is my advice to you. You can be scared all you want. That's fine. It's natural. That's a natural instinct to be afraid. <laughs> so that's good that you're scared. But do it anyway. The worst that can happen is that your manuscript needs to be edited. The best that can happen is that it becomes a hundred million dollar enterprise. Like what? what? <laughs> no brainer, <isn't> it? <laughs> it's simple. Do it scared. Um, it's it's very. It's natural to doubt yourself. However, you still have to get to a point where you have to be able to ex accept criticism, and I think that's that's the. The, the actual fear. The fear isn't whether it's good enough. The fear is whether people, whether you're able to accept the, the feedback and make the changes accordingly. Hmm. You, gotta, you gotta do it scared. Send it to an editor. If you don't think it's good enough, send it to an, an editor. Is Their job is literally to tell you. <laughs> exactly. Get that constructive feedback. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just finish off. How can people connect with you and find you? You guys can find us online at SovereignNoir.com. We just revamped the website. We're adding some events. We already have August through September events. We have this author development series. Check that out. You can go to our events page or you can just go to our shop. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Sovereign dot noir so sovereign sovereign and then the period and then noir um we have a twitter page we're going to shut that down because we're not um using that efficiently enough so i'd much rather not have it than half-ass it so, yeah i get that twitter is my last <laughs> port of call as well <laughs> so instagram we're on there our website we're on there we're on uh linkedin we're revamping that so we're on linkedin sovereign noir publications you can find us and I want to say Goodreads. We're, uh, we're currently redoing our Goodreads too. So we're going to be on three platforms plus our website, Instagram, Facebook, Goodreads, LinkedIn, and our website. So you can definitely find us there. Thank you very much. And then you can find us on LinkedIn, my Facebook page, um, also on YouTube, and you can put those details there as well. I'll send them over to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Last week, we had Miami Ray, who is our eight-year-old book reviewer. She reviewed three of our authors, one after the other, um, oh. last week. She is amazing. And we've got tons of children's books coming her way for her to review for um, the next few weeks. She set up her own YouTube channel. She's reviewing literally a book a day and uploading her YouTube videos each week. Oh. Eight years old. And she's inspired. Um, somebody recently a grown adult who's wondering whether or not to set up a youtube channel she saw her in action and she saw the video last the, the interview last week and she's like right i've got no excuses i'm doing it. so no excuses people we nice. live once. let's do what we need to do it was see you yeah, see see you next week wednesday 7 p.m gmt 2 p.m est thank you so much kamisha we'll get back to 
all the comments. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. See you next week. Bye.